Hey, it's Midnight Raven here, and today we're doing part two of how to have a budget wedding. If you haven't already seen part one, please do so. I will link it at the end of this video. We did talk about invites and flowers and the reception in the last video. In this video, we're going to talk about the actual reception, and then we're going to talk about the honeymoon and the end of the wedding. So, what did we learn in the other one? Well, we learned about the invitations, who to invite, we learned about when to get married on particular days, and we also learned about doing as much of the wedding as you can because it does cut costs. So, we are going to do another 13 budget ways to have a wedding. So, the first one in this video is limit your photographer time. So, if you're going to have a photographer, from nine in the morning to watch you get ready, get dressed, go to the wedding, here in the wedding, at the reception, right up until the end of the day, you're looking at a, an expensive photographer. Starting at nine or 10 or even earlier in the morning, right up to when your um, night finishes at nine or 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. You're talking 12 hours for a photographer, that is gonna cost you a lot. So limit the time with the photographer. Have the photographer in the morning for an hour, maybe take a couple of photos, take a picture of you getting into your dress. Have him at the wedding, but squash how long he's actually taking pictures. But the biggest one is limit him at the reception. If you're going to have a reception, have him take pictures that need to be taken. Limit his time there. Do it so the photographer doesn't turn up first thing. So have the photographer turn up after the meal has been eaten that way he can take pictures of your first dance he can take pictures of you cutting the cake he doesn't have to hang around and not take any pictures because obviously the more you have him there the more it's going to cost you so try and cut the photographer's time down by having him if and when you need them not just having them there for the sake they might get a good photo the second idea no DJ. Sounds like a weird one, I know. Don't have a band, don't have a DJ. You want to cut costs in that respect? Have the music play from your laptop. Have Spotify running. Have a playlist that you made yourself running. Um, you'll cut the cost of having a DJ there for four, five hours, which can be expensive. If you have a band, you'll cut the cost of them because not necessarily do you have a band, but you probably have a DJ as well. If you do the music yourself, you'll cut the cost. But also, you might have a friend that's a DJ that can do it for less. They might give it to you as a wedding present. So, yes, you need to keep your guests entertained. But to do a DJ, you're going to have to pay per hour which can be really expensive if your guests just sit around and not actually dance. If they don't make use of a DJ, then you're basically paying for that DJ to play music and stand there and look pretty. So it's not necessarily always a good idea for a DJ, depending on your wedding, depending on your guests. It could work more cost effective just for you to play the music from your laptop, from your phone. Or like I said, have your friend do it. So. The next one is have no wedding favours. I mentioned this in another video I did that was the trends of 2019 or the not trends anymore. So this is a costly thing. Wedding favours are costly. You have 100, 150 guests. You're going to have to pay for a wedding favour each. Now, it used to be in the day that you used to get a little bag of sugar almonds was the customary wedding thing. Now, wedding favours have become bigger, bolder, and more expensive, but they're not in anymore. So, to cut the cost of wedding favours, just don't give them. It will lessen how much you spend, and you can spend stuff on more worthwhile things, whether it's your catering, your dress, your hen party even. Don't thrutter your wedding budget away because then when you really need money for something you're going to find that you don't have it. Another thing to cut is no gifts for them that are bought. So instead of buying a really expensive gift to thank your wedding party for coming so the bride 
parent or the groom's parent or the best man or the bridesmaid make a gift buy them a bunch of flowers um make a handmade gift save money by not necessarily going out to the high street and buying an expensive present from a department store you don't have to go over the top if you have a bridesmaid or a best man they're going to be happy to be at a wedding anyway to be happy to be invited and to happy to be already a part of your special day you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a really expensive present and shower with them gifts because they already want to be at your wedding if they didn't want to be at your wedding they obviously wouldn't have turned up in the first place so the next thing is to skip the dessert do not have dessert outright so when you do your wedding catering you'll have a starter a main or a des and a dessert or if you're going to have a buffet you'll have a buffet and then a dessert so what i'm suggesting cut the dessert out have a starter and a main or a buffet and instead of having a dessert use your wedding cake you paid for your wedding cake it's standing in the corner cobwebbing up and getting old use your wedding cake as the dessert you don't need to put on a gorgeous spread of dessert and then people take the wedding cake home to throw it in the bin get them to eat the expensive wedding cake that you put time effort and money into buying so my um tip is to forego the dessert table um i'm not against having a candy cart or something like that but don't have a dessert table. Get them to eat your wedding cake. That way you won't have to take it home with you. The next one is bake your own wedding cake. If you have a friend that makes cakes, a relative, a parent that wants to make a cake for you, let them. You don't need to spend four or five hundred pounds on a wedding cake. If they could do a really good deal and they want to make it your wedding present, take the offer. <laughs> Wedding cakes are expensive. This is a cost you do not have to use if you have a friend or a mother or even, God forbid, make your own. If you can make your own cake, you can sit there on the day and say, like, I made this and you'll look really good. Or show off your mum and have her make the cake or a best friend. Save money. Have the cake you want, not the cake the baker wants to make. That's also a good tip as well. Design the cake yourself. See if your friends can make it. Maybe they even have some brilliant ideas. The next one is, instead of having a wedding cake, have cupcakes. Less waste. So what you do is you find out how many guests you're coming to your wedding. You average out how many guests will probably take a cupcake. And you do cupcakes instead. Um... You can also get these little plastic cupcake holders that you can offer if they then want to take the cupcake home. So um, you can use them. But you cut the cost of a cake because cupcakes are cheaper than having a wedding cake. Yes, they're probably not as extravagant and lavish, but you really can decorate a cupcake. You can glitterify it. You can put decorations on it. You can make the cases, your wedding date. You can go over the top with a cupcake, but not necessarily over the top on the budget as well. So the next thing is rent your wedding attire. So get the bride and the groom to buy there. So buy your wedding dress and buy your groom's suit because you can always use his suit at a later date. But when it comes to your entourage or your wedding party, or whatever you want to call them, your bridesmaids, your ushers have them rent their attire so go to a department store buy cheap dresses or if you're going to rent the tuxes rent them on the cheap sometimes if you take a bridal party into a suit place you can actually get it cheaper the more people that you have in your wedding party they actually give you discounts and sometimes you then even get the groom's wedding suit for free if you're hiring them not necessarily with the bride obviously the bride isn't going to want to rent a dress obviously but the bridesmaids um department store dresses sometimes you can hire dresses um i think it's more for the men to hire their suits um not every man owns a suit not every man wants to wear a suit girls on the other hand 
love to wear dresses so they're more likely to be more up for buying a dress possibly paying for it themselves so the next one is make your own buttonhole so as i've said before flowers are expensive make your own buttonholes go to your local garden center your local nursery a friend's garden get some flowers tie a little bit of ribbon around them and make a buttonhole they're really cheap really effective you can pick the flowers you can pick how they're styled you can pick how your buttonholes look um, you can get together with your girls your family and sit there and make them and make them part of your wedding too so they feel like they're actually helping and investing in your day and then when the day happens they can say i made them and it really does make them feel like they're part of your wedding but it also does give you some help with the cost and the time and the stress as well use garden flowers don't go to your florist and pay market value for them go to your local supermarket go to your local nursery if you've got a friend who's got a beautiful garden ask if you can have some of their flowers go to your local garden center and get some really nice flowers but at cut prices your flowers as long as they look lovely they don't have to be expensive your flowers are only got to last technically one day even um even less depending on how long your wedding is so five six eight ten hours do you really need to spend thousands of pounds on flowers if they're only gonna die the next day or they'll be thrown in a bin because the wedding's over the next one is do your own hair and makeup now this is a very costly thing if you're going to have your hair and makeup done the bride will have hers done the maid of honor will want hers done the bridesmaids will want their done it's time consuming um it takes forever to have a bridal party have their hair and makeup done in the morning if your bridesmaids can do their own makeup perfect if you have a friend who's a stylist or a beautician or a friend that would love to do your makeup give them a try before the wedding see if they do a really good job and if they do use them for your wedding if you have a hairdresser friend that can do your hair on the day have them do a trial run before the wedding and if they really do knock it out of the park and give you a stunning hairdo let your friends help you on your wedding do do your hair and makeup it will feel more special having your friends do your hair and makeup and walking down that aisle looking like a portrait than it will having a really expensive hair and makeup stylist trying to fit them all in, getting your hair done, getting your makeup done, um, and trying to fit it all in and the stress levels because your hair's not right and your makeup not's right and you don't like this and you don't like that. It's easier with your friends to say, I don't like this or I want to change that ahead of time just by having a trial run. So use your friends your family around you like i said to help you don't feel like you have to pay for everything people do love to offer when it comes to weddings another one skip confetti now i am totally against confetti confetti in general yes you can get biodegradable confetti i know but what happens to confetti you throw it it blows in the wind why don't bother with confetti save your money put it onto something else have a more extravagant dress have your dj play for longer have your photographer take more pictures spend it on your honeymoon don't fritter away confetti because it's just like throwing your money away as it flies off into the air it also is a mess you can get dark biodegradable ones now they do suggest throwing um rose petals or flowers um no rice although they used to throw rice but it actually does kill animals especially pigeons um so forego the confetti the last one probably isn't to everyone's taste but honeymoon in your own country so the tradition in this day and age is to go abroad go to spain go to the bahamas go to barbados go to america go off to france have a safari holiday in your own country england is a beautiful place spend the weekend at whitby have your honeymoon at scarborough have your honeymoon at blackpool have your honeymoon in cornwall go over to wales see the emerald isle go over to um ireland 
go into Scotland and spend the week up there. I mean, there is so picturesque views in the UK. Do you need to go abroad? Yes, okay, the weather is a bit iffy around here. But you're on your honeymoon. It's that time of love. Do you really need the extravagantness? Isn't the main thing is that you two are together in holy matrimony, spending this quality time together as husband or wife? Does it matter where you are? Does it matter how much it costs? Not necessarily. Maybe to some people, but to me, I would I would have a honeymoon in Whitby or I would have a honeymoon in York or Scotland. Somewhere in the UK, look for cheap deals on your honeymoons. Book it in your own place. There are beautiful places around the country. There are beautiful places you've never seen. I would suggest honeymooning in the UK. Other people would suggest honeymooning abroad. It's cheaper. I, I just love the scenery in the UK. I think it's a beautiful country. But they are my budget wedding ideas. So if you haven't seen part one where we talked about invitations, and the reception and we talked about the flowers and taking pictures check out part one i will link it at the end here hopefully i haven't rambled on i did want to get my point out for each of them and explain why i think this is a way of a budget wedding if you have any more ideas on how to have a budget wedding do comment down below i'd love to hear everybody else's points of view obviously i am not married i have engaged 12 years i am speaking from a point of view where I have seen both my sisters get married, I've seen my mum um, get married um, and how much stress apparently she went through, I've seen my stepmom marry, so I have seen quite a lot of marriages and I've also seen quite a lot of divorces, so marriage isn't everything, so don't always spend your money on a wedding, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to stay together forever, so £5,000 budget, £50,000 budget, I don't think it matters, but you still can make the perfect day for under five grand or even less. Some people get married on a £1,000 and have a wonderful wedding and live happily ever after. So if you haven't already and you love this video, do give me a big thumbs up. Comment down below if you know any more budget saving tips for weddings. If you want to see part one, you'll find it somewhere up here. If you want to like and subscribe and leave a big things up, the big thumbs up that would be brilliant nearly got this video right and i'll see you very soon for another video take care thanks for watching bye